It's spooky season, so what's better than a Halloween episode from your fourth favorite Fast Talking Animated Shorts channel? And while the living dead is spooky, there is truly nothing scarier for this channel than a hard deadline. Did I get this video done in time? Let's find out. It's Soul Black Gravelords. Soul Black Gravelords, or Undead Vampire Counts Legions of Nagash Lords, are the hardest army to say five times in a row, and essentially one of Warhammer's longest running factions, with a lineage dating back to the early 90s, albeit with multiple rebrandings like Prince, or a more human Facebook. Gravelords are the shambling dead, bound by the will of Sigmar's ex-bestie and number one frenemy. They are the OG death faction in everything but name, with classic skeletons and zombies led by sexy vampires with smatterings of wolves and bats to up the spooky flavor. Cities of Nagash are one of the more flexible armies in the game, able to create narratively and competitively satisfying armies in a range of flavors, from magical doms with game-changing spells to hordes of skeletons and zombies, slowly thriller dancing their way towards opponents. You can build elite cavalry and powerful heroes that can go toe to bony toe with the best of them, or terrifying behemoths that can do the mash. The monster mash. Yes, the monster mash. It'll be a great time. While Nagash is undoubtedly the Emperor of Expiration, the Gravelord sub-faction are broken up by dynasties, loosely based on the old Vampire Count's bloodlines and led by their main bloodsuckers. Legion of Night are the old Von Karstein faction, led by Manfred Von Karstein, who inherited the faction thanks to the untimely passing of Vlad and Izzy. Manfred is basically the last Von Karstein left in his continued crusade to fail upwards that has drastically changed the world of Warhammer as we know it and his own hairline. Legions of Blood are led by Neferata, keeping the old Lamian bloodline alive in the creatively titled New Lamia, which boasts extra tough skeletons thanks to extra strong bone magic or milk drinking or something. Neferata is also a cunning leader because her forces can ambush, which really makes every other leader in the game look very stupid because they can't. Castelli are the old blood dragons and as such let you run a heavy vampire centric force. Led by Prince Vordry, the sub faction lets you run 1200 points for vampires in 5th edition fantasy as a single 200 point battle line unit. Vircos and Avangori are two new dynasties with no real ties to old bad square base Warhammer. Both are more monstrous than previous vampire bloodlines with Avangori vampires turning into twisted body horror monsters and Vircos likely being furries. And while the Strigoi continue to exist on as flesh eater courts, pour one out for the Necrarchs, the only bloodline to not be given a new name. Now, in the spirit of the season, we will list the top five scariest kits in the Soul Black Gravelords range. Number five, Deadwalker Zombies. Games Workshop did an excellent job reimagining the old zombie models and making them quite spooky looking, even if all the tree branches on them are a little silly. Number four, Neferata because some Warhammer players are terrified of strong women, and in fact, most 40k players seem to be terrified of women in general. Number three, Rajikar's Court, because $210 is a terrifying amount to spend on a quarter of the $290 Cursed City box. Number two, Lork of Eye, a terrible, twisted abomination. Lork of Eye has all the grace and unnerving poise of a classic vampire, malformed in a Cronenberg-esque fashion with hard-hitting rules to match. Number one, the Corpse Cart. It's terrifying that this terrible looking 15 year old sculpt is still available for sale. Even scarier still that I'll probably end up buying one. Truly spooky. And now you know how to play Soul Blade Gravelords in Age of Sigmar. <laughs>